Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why the Clippers might actually have a shot at LeBron James. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why all the hatred of Bill Belichick needs to stop now. Speak for yourself on a Tuesday. Starts right now, baby. Who hates Belichick? Oh, you got to read this. I call everybody love oh. Belichick. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined now by former NBA All-Star Kenyon Martin and the founder of the big league, Jason McIntyre. Let's start with some huge news from right here in Los Angeles where the Clippers traded the biggest star in team history, Blake Griffin, to the Pistons yesterday for Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, and some other stuff. Reportedly, the Clippers made the move because they believe LeBron James will seriously consider signing with them when he becomes a free agent this offseason. Cowherd. Do the Clippers really have a sh shot at the King? I don't think so because he's the number one basketball brand as a player in the world, and they're the number two brand in Los Angeles. <laughs> and I think LeBron is very aware of business. I think he's a very smart guy. Um, you know, he knows who to connect with, who not to. He's done very well. If you look at his, if you look at his business ops, he's done very well. He knows his stuff. Clippers aren't big enough for him. To and me. the Cleveland Cavaliers were. I mean, the, but he's the huge brand. Uh, the Miami Heat were some huge brand. Well, Pat Riley. I mean, if my, Miami. You do I... know that Jerry West is running the Clippers and that LeBron James considers Jerry West the godfather. When he made the decision the originally, he re he talked about reading Jerry West's book and how much respect he has for you, the logo. You, you think he'd be a Clipper? I, I think that the Clippers believe they have a shot. And they have made that they again. You were earlier this week. LeBron, LA's in play. LA's in play. You're thinking the Lakers, the Clippers here, and Jerry West here. It says Los Angeles is in play. We play basketball here. I'm Jerry West. Who look? I get in a room with LeBron James, and say, Magic, or Jerry West. Who's gonna make a more compelling case? Yeah, I think the Clippers have a shot. Um, and that since you put it that way, I think Magic Johnson has a more <laughs> uh, compelling case. Business-wise, for him, more opportunities. Um, but it's LeBron's neither. coming here to win championships. I understand that, but he also has LeBron James Inc. or whatever, however you want to call it, his brand, his business, like Colin was saying. Um, if it was to go the case, I really can't see him coming and be a Clipper if you if you are coming to Los Angeles. Like, why play well, second fiddle? By the I'm way, saying? if you trade DeAndre Jordan, which I read yes. today. Who do the Clippers have? At least the Lakers have oh, three. DeAndre yeah. Jordan's the centerpiece of, of what well, he NBA can help. title he, team. He can help. He's better than uh, most of the defenders they have in but Cleveland right now. Isn't that what LeBron likes? He likes going somewhere, putting his stamp on it, and bringing a buddy with him, whether it's Chris Bosh or Kevin Love. Now he goes here to the Clippers. I mean, they're definitely in the mix for LeBron. There's no denying it. you got an owner who doesn't care about money. Okay, he, Microsoft money. He's loaded. He will go over the luxury tax, doesn't matter. And guess what? Doc Rivers probably going to be on the way out. He didn't want to be a part of a Boston rebuild, so why would he want to stick around for this? Then you get LeBron. Hey, you want to bring your guy Fisdale in to coach? We'll take him. He's an L.A. native. Uh, so you got money, you got the coaching aspect, and then, you, you know, Kawhi Leonard's up, I believe, in a year or two. Well, I uh, love Kyrie media. Irving. I mean, all there are hypotheticals. options. Listen, but, I but love I sports Kenyon, media, but, all these hypotheticals. Kenyon, Listen, this consider is, this. Yo, he just ran down like, all these different scenarios, like, he didn't put Kawhi here now, LeBron, like, Fizdale, like, who else? But look, who else you Kenya, they're clearing cap room. That's the new NBA. You're in the mix if okay. you acquire draft picks yeah. and you can clear cap room and you can afford guys. Okay. They can afford LeBron James once they move off DeAndre Jordan. Wouldn't you rather be in that spot than, I don't know, 25 of the other this. teams? If you're Steven Spielberg in Hollywood and commerce-wise, you're the biggest director in the history of the city, you choose in the third biggest studio to work with, no, you're either making your own DreamWorks or you're going to the big dog, whoever that is. The all-time greats in any business ain't going to inferior brands. It's not what they're doing. I mean, so you're going to say LeBron's going to go to the second biggest. Yeah. I would make an argument, the third biggest brand. The biggest brand in L.A. for basketball is Lakers. Number two is UCLA basketball. That's a bigger brand than the Clippers are. Again, what greatness does is make you think it's transferable that wherever I go, the brand becomes a big deal and an even bigger deal. Only and I can take... I, I get, Only if you win. Where has LeBron not won it? Only if he's winning. Where has LeBron not won it? The he's first, done winning? The first years in Cleveland was a struggle. I mean, he, listen, in the post big season, struggle. He took the... He carried, they didn't make the playoffs his first, when he first got there. It's over but a to, decade. To, to Kenya, Still, though, listen, but, starting over, starting with some fresh, 
I think you'd rather go into something where you already have pieces in place. And the Lakers have pieces. I, they have more what? than the Clippers Thank do. Thank you. Well, they well, do. The Lakers Clippers debate. They have more different. than the Clippers do in place right now as we speak. We know as Brandon, we sit here Brandon Ingram and moving can play. forward. You want what LeBron wants is flexibility to yes. bring one of his boys right, with him. Right, right. Okay, that's fine. And you give him that. Player, okay, you player. give him that option. No, the Clippers, with Balmer's money and with all the cap space they're clearing, that's like a free runway. And again, you got Jerry West who gets credit for turning around the, the Golden State Warriors and being the key figure and all that. Uh, and he brought Pau Gasol to the Lakers with Kobe. Yeah. Clippers, you know, I, I just don't think Jerry West is smart. I don't think they're doing this move be, without having some sense they have a shot. 25, 30 I think percent. It all had to do with Blake. I don't think it had anything to do with LeBron. It all had to do with Blake. You know what I'm saying? They just wanted to rid themselves of Blake. Yeah, you just paid them franchise money, franchise player money. You f seven months out off of this deal and you moving? I think it all has to do with Blake. I think it has nothing to do with LeBron. Yet. Let's go to that. The, the Griffin trade comes just a few months after the team went totally over the top in an effort to convince then free agent Griffin to re-sign with the team. As Lee Jenkins tweeted, quote, the Clippers held their free agent meeting with Griffin at Staples. They lowered the lights in the arena. They raised his jersey to the rafters, as a choir sang. Uh, the PA announcer said tonight we're honoring a lifelong Clipper. Jenkins wasn't the only one to call out the contradiction with LeBron weighing in today. When a player gets traded, it's, they was doing what's best for the franchise. But when a player decides to leave, it's, he's not loyal. He's a snake. He's, uh, he's not committed. That's just the, that's the that's the narrative of how, how it goes. So uh, I'm definitely I, I know that firsthand. All right, Whitlock, were the Clippers disloyal to Blake Griffin? No, because the loyalty is the contract. And the money, and he's gonna get all that money. The NBA's guaranteed contracts. I think that's what these franchises or any uh, mature person, that's all they can promise you is what they put on paper. Everything else is a crapshoot. So, no, I, I don't see it as disloyal. Uh, I, I see it as just they, it looks crazy that six months ago they were all in on Blake and you're a clipper for life, and clearly they have pivoted. And again, I go back to they've pivoted. You only pivot, make that kind of a big pivot, is because LeBron James is on the table. Well, I, I've always thought that Blake Griffin's the Hummer in a world of Teslas. <laughs> and Golden State's got all these new cars that have adapted and they're smart. And here's Blake, still can't shoot. Uh, now he's injury prone. If I give you a graph and I go look at Blake Griffin when he entered the league and Blake Griffin now, it's the same dude. He's never gotten any better. Field goal percentage now is worse. I mean, that was all true six months ago. That time, <laughs> no, no. I, so what I'm saying is they signed him because they were trapped because Chris Paul left. So the Clippers were like, well, we got to sell tickets here. We're in a Laker town. So they signed him knowing full well he's an injury-prone 6'9 guy that people don't like playing with that I think's gotten a little Hollywood, a little hey, distraught. Jaden Kendall Jenner. He's yeah, I mean, gone Hollywood. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't a little. <laughs> little, little, little. <laughs> so, so my feeling is when they signed him, you had to have some self-awareness that a lot of this is because we lost Chris Paul. It's not because we love him. They you. gave him $131 million yeah. in but a both panic of those, mode. Guys, both of those you ain't be that true, hurt. Right? <laughs> you ain't that hurt by Chris Paul leaving that you give somebody 170 <laughs> and you're not invested in it. Like, that's hard for me to believe. Didn't you think the contract, though, when it came out with Blake, weren't you like, Jesus, yes, yes, you're yes, trapped. That, yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, Blake, that. Blake, can you? Yes. Blake could have easily said, you know what, I'm going to take a little less than 170, give me the no trade clause. And, th and I'm sure he wishes he did that, right, back uh, uh, six uh, months uh, ago. Uh, 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 give me, uh, I ain't taking less than nothing. Uh, well, it, I mean, <laughs> now you got to go to Detroit and, 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 and now play with Andre Drummond and, and the Pistons and, and guess miss what? the playoffs. And guess what? And you're not dating Kendall Jenner anymore. Still, still got that 170. By the way, he's missed he's missed 70 <laughs> games in three years. Yeah, the guy's had six surgeries. I mean, come on. He's no, no. 29 years old. He's a I, shell of his skin. I want to go back to Kenya's deal that the Clippers are just all, it's all about Blake Griffin. They're just done with him. Yeah. They changed in six months. I, I think it's, they not really where they should be, I guess, team-wise. They're looking at what they have on the roster. And competing in the West, right? You got DeAndre and you got Blake. And the top team in the West, or well, the top two teams right now, Houston and Golden State, right? Don't match up. Yeah. You, we don't match up well with both of them. 
you bring in a guy like Tobias. I'm just looking yeah, forward, sure. moving forward. He spreads the floor. He does more. Avery Bradley played for Doc in Boston. He knows his skill set. You know I'm saying they got the picks out of the deal. I, I, I think it's moving forward. You know what I'm saying, and not having anything to do with LeBron. And if so he and if he does choose to make that move, then you're like, oh man, we can get LeBron now. So Kevin, but I think yeah. it's about him and the things that's been going on, the injuries, the the getting the, breaking his hand, punching his team, uh, the equipment guy. I think it's a lot more than we know, and it's more than just basketball. Cavs have lost 10 of 15. The okay. timing is what Locke says. Just a little bit interesting, right? Oh, wow, the Cavs are imploding. LeBron could hit the market. Blake, eh, it's the season's not happening. The season's Why not over yet, on? though. We say this, the last three or four seasons, you said the same thing about the Cleveland well, except Cavaliers. Except LeBron's a free agent. But it, you said the same thing about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, they're struggling right now. Oh, what's LeBron going to do? Or oh, they go to the finals to win it. Next year, LeBron, the Cleveland Cavaliers struggle. What does LeBron go do? They make it to the finals. He don't leave. Same thing now. Oh, the Cleveland Cavaliers are struggling right now. Who in the last seven, been the last seven finals? Until somebody proves me different, LeBron James is going to, he's in Cleveland. He's going to yeah. make it to the finals again. And he's in Cleveland. Like, I don't think he's leaving. Uh, you know what? There thought. was a moment about two months ago. So they, so Chris Paul leaves and they just, they bring in the Brink truck for Blake. Blake yeah. And then one day I'm on the internet and there's a TMZ story and he's out in Hollywood with, Jenner and I remember thinking that day I'm like <laughs> if I'm the Clippers I just gave you a fortune I want more resolve and more focus and you're out in the Kardashian group and I remember that day thinking we just totally committed to you you didn't see Kobe out doing that stuff like if I finally back up the truck I want you now, you're the franchise. And my first takeaway was, oh boy, is he distracted. This is gonna be, and I think there's a possibility that some guys in that room were like, he ain't the right guy. No, he ain't the I, I can see, your point is excellent because also Lamar Odom and Chloe were right here in Los Angeles. And we got to see firsthand. You go off into that world and you can fall down a cliff. Then again, I'm not even blaming the car dad. Lamar had problems. Sure that extend well beyond the Kardashians. But again, if you want to be in that TMZ world and that ultra celebrity world, and again, I think you raise an excellent point. They give you 170 million to be the man, to be all in the way that, you know, you want your great players Kobe to be. Kobe money. Well, I mean, yeah. that, well, that, you saw well, what Kobe did. That contract wrecked the Lakers for five I, years. It's the person, man. Like you said, people have their own things going on. I don't care who he date, as long as you show up and play basketball, man. But I think for like, an office guy, it's, it's, it's whatever, man. Like TMZ, they everywhere. They had Starbucks and Calabasas, so you can't get <laughs> you can't get away from TMZ. So like, I don't think they're in Detroit. I'm though, saying, like, oh, trust <laughs> me, they're, listen, they everywhere. Listen, they got people working everywhere. As long as you show up and do your job, man. Who cares who you? Do? All right, welcome back. We're joined now by Fox NFL analyst Michael Vick and Tony Gonzalez. Let's move to Bill Belichick who is busy preparing for his record eighth Super Bowl as a head coach. Not surprisingly, Belichick has had a, to deal with his share of haters during his unprecedented run of dominance. But now one of them, the Santa Rosa Press Democrats, Grant Cohn, says the greatest coach in NFL history has actually been bad for the league. Oh, writing, quote, man. the NFL would be better if Bill Belichick never coached. Belichick doesn't let the media watch his practices, so now most coaches close their practices, too. They want to be like him, want to be like the best, and they're afraid someone might be spying because of Belichick spied. He created a culture of paranoia in the NFL. Now that paranoia is pervasive. Cowherd. Is this guy crazy? This is why newspapers are dying. <laughs> <laughs> this, this article was so ridiculous. First of all, he's, create, he's a villain. We all know sports needs villains. Harbaugh now is a villain. Saban to some is a villain. Villains are great, okay? And, and LeBron for a long time was a villain. And then LeBron went back to Cleveland and the NBA's got no villain. You know what's better than a villain? What? A rival. And Belichick has no rival. Is that his fault? To some degree. Well, what degree? What he's arguing, I'm not saying I agree with him, but what he's arguing is everybody's now mimicking Bill Belichick. Everybody wants to be secretive. Everybody wants to be paranoid. Everybody uh, wants to have a little distance between them and the media. And so, again, you know who was a rival of Bill Belichick? And it was fun, and it only lasted for a short time. But Rex Ryan, 
He, he took a different approach. He was far more wide open, talkative. He tried to take on Belichick and had some success, but then eventually got run out of the league. Mike Tomlin's no rival for Bill Belichick. He, he, he owns him. Bill Carroll was. Bill, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Bill a little Cower bit. was. And if yeah. he would have stayed. Tony Dungy was. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. Tom Coughlin clearly yeah, but was. Again, so you're saying he's bad for the league. Cause, cause no, I'm not saying that. The writer said that. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, closing <laughs> practices, that's been happening for a long time. Belichick didn't start that stuff. Secondly, most of the great coaches in the NFL weren't funny like Jerry Glanville. Chuck Knoll was a bore, and he was great. Bill Walsh tried to do TV. He stunk. The late Bill Walsh. Most great coaches aren't. They're not Chris Rex Rock Ryan. funny. Rex Ryan's funny. Ooh. He's out of work. Jerry Glanville was funny. Jerry He's Glanville out of work. Funny. You know who's not funny? Dan Quinn. He's not very funny. Bill Belichick's not funny. So I don't buy into this thing that, you know, Belichick, he's not, he closes practice. Jimmy Johnson was rough on the media. I mean, he was, Jimmy didn't give you anything. He had the wildest, craziest team he did, in the but he was of football. Tough on the, that the Cowboys team was fun. I would make an argument now with John Gruden coming in the league. And, Sh and Sean McVay in the league. There's some fun coaches out there. Pete Carroll's got a lot of activity. They ain't rivals. I don't, yeah, I'm <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. I, I don't think Belichick, if there's a problem in the NFL and the ratings are down, some of it is the politics. The Kaepernick stuff, there's a percentage of people you that don't. You where the writer didn't go. He's just saying Belichick created a culture, a pervasive culture of paranoia in the league. Mm. The league's not, yeah. no, no one's Phil Jackson have a rival in the NBA? Was that bad for the league when he was kicking everybody's butt? That was Michael Jordan. Not <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't buy into this rivalry stuff. I just think Bill Belichick is the GOAT. You look at him and he's, he's the greatest of all time, just like his quarterback, Tom Brady. Everything he's done up until this point makes other coaches around the NFL want to blueprint everything that he's he's been able to do and and it won't change and of course it, it's some negative things that have happened 2004 you know with the spy gate and things like that but th this that doesn't nullify the things that he's been able to do so you want to play for him? I would love to play for him yeah. you can line me up anywhere any position I'll <laughs> he play for him because we're gonna have success too. yeah and we're gonna <laughs> find a way to win the ring yeah, you know, I, I love what you said there, Mike, because he's – everybody – you copy greatness. That's how you become yeah. great. You copy greatness. So if Bill Belichick is saying, okay, this is where I – I don't know why more, coach, more coaches don't copy him because ego has no amigo, and that's what some of these coaches yeah. are. Why can't they go out there and say I – would, I would try to do – bring my personality to the blueprint that he has set. That is the way I would do it. And paranoia, that, that, that's been around forever. Yeah. First of all, the, the whole stuff – you talk about the, the, the bad – the black eyes that the New England Patriots organization has yeah. had. That stuff, don't tell me. The teams steal signals. Teams try go through trash cans yeah. at the hotels. They do, every team does this. Their New England Patriots, it's just been magnified because of the success that they have, and people are looking for reasons to hate them because they want something new. And by the way, Jason, dynasties now run sports, women's basketball, college football, Duke's number top five again, New England Patriots. Um, you start looking around sports right now, there's a lot of dominance. Yeah. A lot of dominance. I, I want to go back to these guys are former players that are now transitioned into the media. Would you want every coach in the NFL to be like Belichick mm -hmm. as, as a media that's person? A and that's who uh, – and so you like it. As a media person, the guy that wrote this article is a media person. Talking about he's ruined it for us in the media. You don't, you don't buy that? Well, I, 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 I don't – I, th I think when coach, that's the mistake that some of those coaches that come out of that Belichick system is they try to be too much like him. Yeah. I say take the blueprint, the underlying principles that he practices with and that he teaches, but then you make sure that you stay true to who you are. And I think that's that's the problem with some of these coaches. That's why it's why none of them have success when they leave. You can't be Bill Belichick. Yeah, that, that's you, who he you, is. Man, it's only one Bill Belichick, and and if you. Over the course of time, you'll probably never see another Bill Belichick again. But in every sport, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, it's going to always be one coach that's going to dominate. In, in basketball, it was Phil Jackson for years, won six rings. You know, yeah, it may have had some negative things happen over the time, but, you know, this is what every coach wants to look like or be like. And without Bel Bill Belichick, what would the NFL look like? We needed a guy like him. I think he's made the league smarter. And I think, I think in any industry, when you say... Baseball's a little smarter today. Football's a little smarter. NBA analytics, a little smarter. That's good for sports. Mostly, I agree with you. This guy's argument is, and I think it's 
somewhat fair. He has made it smarter, but he's also made it more paranoid and more corrupt. That would be his argument. Oh, mm. paranoid. I don't think so. Well, paranoid. It's, it's been, this guy is... That would be his argument. Are you telling me when you were... What's the first football team you covered? You can't beat them, join them. The, the, in a real way, the Chiefs. But you, they weren't... Marty Schottenheimer wasn't paranoid? I got a question for you guys, for you two, because you guys cover the media, okay? Uh, do, do, you, would, do you like covering a guy like Belichick? Do you like his press conferences? I like geniuses, yes. Now, yes. I, I, I wouldn't like it, and Marty Schottenheimer... Uh, was very, uh, he kept things close to the vest, but he also kept the media kind of close to him. He gave you some access. He would open himself up a little bit and open up. Now, yeah, I think, did Mark? I couldn't remember if Marty allowed his assistant coaches to talk to the media or not, but again, he wasn't like Belichick. Belichick gives you nothing. Because he, he doesn't like you. Because he doesn't like you. He doesn't like you guys. Be the great thing he, does, he does not like you guys at all. He does not want to talk to you. By the way, Greg NBA's got a Belichick. It's Greg Popovich. Popovich. And don't be shocked if someone writes a similar article about Popovich at some time. If you treat the media that way. And look, I got a great deal of respect for Belichick. I think he's the greatest coach of all time. But I'm not shocked someone's taking this pot shot at him. Well, it's just... Maybe the newspaper industry, if they <laughs> the media just were less more. They want concerned more. about being treated well, celebrate genius. Well, Don't they, mock it. Please you celebrate have, it. You guys have feelings. Yes, I get it. All right, to the other guy coaching the Super Bowl, Doug Peterson. Belichick praised him yesterday, saying he's a great play caller. But from a resume standpoint, this is a major mismatch. With Belichick making his 11th Super Bowl appearance to Peterson's first. Whitlock, will Doug Peterson wilt under the pressure of facing Bill? Absolutely. It happens to every coach that faces him in a high-pressure situation in a big game. They do dumb stuff because they, they want to try to meet Bill Belichick's intellect and his great decision-making. Uh, Doug Peterson is a high-risk coach. He'll do some high-risk things in this game, and it will cost the Philadelphia Eagles this game in all likelihood. Tom Coughlin, on the other hand, much older, more mature than any of these guys that are competing against Belichick, he was a conservative coach. And he somehow managed to beat Bill Belichick twice in the Super Bowl because he, he, does, he didn't let his ego get caught up in trying to outwit Bill Belichick. Peterson will do that, and it'll cost him the game. It is interesting. When you face, you know, the people always say, I, you know, I don't think about Belichick. I don't. Of course you do. Coach, you don't become an NFL coach without an ego. P- you've worked with them, mm. period. Coaches are stubborn. Yeah. They're, they're, they're protective. If you don't think Doug Peterson is sitting there this week thinking, I'm going to show Bill. I'm going to fool the genius. There's no question that Philadelphia will do something. There will be a risk component in this game that has been put in to make himself look capable of Bill. And that's what I... Now, I don't know if that's wilting, but I do believe that... Doug Marone wilted. I, well, no, he Everybody did. I see coaching. I think Bill Peterson Bill. will take a risk in this game that maybe is a little out of character to put his stamp on this game as an offensive whiz. I do believe that will happen. I think Doug Peterson will lean on some of his, his former coaches. Uh, I think he'll lean on Andy uh, in, in certain Mistake. instances. Uh, you know, it could, for, for, it could be for the right reasons. But he does have a great coaching staff centered around him, so it's not all on Doug Peterson to go out and try to outsmart Belichick because that's probably the worst thing that he could try to do. He needs to lean on the players and lean on the things that got, has gotten them into, to this point playing in the Super Bowl. And I think that was coming in with super, super conservative game plans for Nick Foles and not trying to outthink the opponent or, or the opposition, just playing the game and, and, and doing the things that has got him into this point. And, you know, Doug comes from a great background of offensive coaches, starting from Andy to Mike Holmgren. So it, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's, he just has to go out there and, and just try to find a way to get it done. Yeah, well, you know, I, I look at uh, Nick Saban. But he, he, you look at his record against his former uh, coaches that he's had. He's beat them all. I think he's undefeated. Yeah. Right. Uh, I was looking at that stat they had during the national championship game as he beat another quarter uh, coach that, that, that coached with him. And I think this is the same with Bill Belichick. The thing I would tell Doug Peterson, if he was ever to come to me for advice, I would say, just like what you said, 
put, check your ego at the door. Do not try to outcoach this guy. You just stay within your game plan. Forget about going out there because it is. Yeah, the implications are there. If you're a coach going against him right now, he's got to be thinking. Of course. If I beat yeah. Belichick, you know what that does for me, my ego. Oh. But I, that's where you have to fight against. So because that's where you lose. That Mark is exactly word. how you lose. This is what's going to happen. If Andy Reid does it, Doug Peterson does it. This is what they do. They're going to abandon the running game. They're going to abandon the Blunt and Ajay, yeah. and he's going to get caught up in the pass game. And Nick, and because he, he's created, he's going to try to drive the narrative that he's the greatest quarterback whisperer going. I had Carson Wentz lost the MVP, and I turned Nick Foles into a, a great quarterback. Th now that cements his resume and his brand. He's the QB whisperer. That's going to get him beat. Run the damn football with Ajay and, and Blunt. But I get, I've seen it with Andy Reid a million times, and Andy Reid's a hell of a coach. But that guy loves to call pass plays, regardless of the score, most, regardless most, of the situation. Most, you're, to this point, you're right. Most <laughs> – Dave Wanstatt always says this. He, Dave Wanstatt, when he coached, he said, every coordinator comes in. Coach, I love the running game. He goes, nobody loves the running game. They all want to throw the ball. <laughs> yeah. And to your point, if you are seen as this hot, young, smart guy – I think to your point, I, I, I see it as exotics or trick plays, but I, I think it's, remember, coaching now outside of Belichick in the NFL, it's just survival. You're just trying to get another check. So you're, I think, I think he's going to want to put his stamp on this game with a trick or a drive. It's going to be the pass again. And they always, they mismanage the clock because they, they just forget to run the football. I've the, seen it a million the, times. The, the one thing I thought the Philadelphia Eagles did in the playoffs, they had balance. And... I give Doug Peterson credit because the things that some of the coaches that he coached for or coached with wouldn't do in terms of calling consecutive plays, you know, duplicating the plays, calling them over and over again. I seen him run two screen plays against Atlanta. One play only got four yards. He ran the same exact play the next play and got a 20-yard gain down the sideline. So he's not afraid to come right at you. And I think in this case, going against Bill Belichick, he just can't try to pad the playbook. He's just, he has to narrow it down and find ways to just execute and find the things that works and keep it going. Welcome back. Um, let's move to Floyd Mayweather, who's had a busy week trolling Conor McGregor. Just the day after tweeting out a picture of him punching Conor with a caption, Mayweather crushes McGregor. Floyd posted a video of himself walking into an octagon. Conor responded, tweeting, quote, Ha, ah, very good. Keep up the good work, my son. Yours sincerely, senior. <laughs> Whitlock, you think Floyd would actually fight in the UFC? Absolutely. And I, I think that Floyd wears who he is on his sleeve. It's the money team. He is all about money. People think he's all about the undefeated record. And, again, he's not. He's about money. And he's a guy that lives a high, fast-paced life. He likes to gamble. He's based in Las Vegas. There are a trillion ways to blow money in Las Vegas. When you choose to live there, you're choosing to be in constant need of money. And so Floyd's lifestyle, where he lives, and the fact that he has not falsely advertised, he is about the money. And if there's a check big enough, he'll get into the UFC ring. I think it's going to happen between him and McGregor. And I also, you know, I initially was like, nah, this is, but John Jones is out. Brock Lesnar is now in wrestling. Um, Ronda Rousey is now in wrestling. McGregor hasn't fought in a while. Could I argue there's a little bit of a star void in UFC? I mean, right now, in, in this little moment in time, they've had a few, for different reasons, move on, move out, s segue out, and... They're, they could use a pop. Again, but I don't think that has anything to do with Floyd's motivation. Floyd no, 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 has his own... No, that's the UFC yeah. saying, yeah. listen, we'll just open up the checkbook for yeah. you. Floyd has his own promotion team. Floyd is about Floyd. Again, it, it's... People act like he's difficult to understand. He's not remotely... Again, when you have a team, teams are expensive. You got one. You got six kids. You know how expensive that is. <laughs> Floyd has a team, the money team. It ain't Floyd, money, Mayweather. It's the team. And so all those extra people to support and to he's got to drive commerce for all those people. 
Floyd will get in the UFC. It won't, he won't care about winning or losing. He'll care about the paycheck at the end. M McGregor won't even really, I, in my view, get the chance to embarrass Floyd because it'll be a sham. People will buy it, pay-per-view. Floyd will put up some little phony effort, kind of like he did the first two or three rounds of that boxing match with McGregor. This won't last nearly as long. And then Floyd will go down and collect his check. The one thing I, I think, oh God, he could get humiliated. Like, right, right, because you have to give him a decent opponent. You can't, you're not going to pay him a fortune if he's fighting some... No, he's going to fight, he's gonna fight McGregor. But you know Floyd, because Floyd's going to make the guidelines and the rules favor Floyd, no? He's, he's going to make the money favor Floyd. That, that, he's the money team. He's not the rules team. He's not any, the integrity team. He's the money team. The check will be bigger for Floyd because he's taking the bigger risk and, he, and he's already dominated him in boxing. So he'll get the bigger piece of the pie and that, make the rules whatever you want. If McGregor wants to bring a gun in, Floyd, good. I'll just wear a bulletproof vest and <laughs> he'll be fine. Just make sure when it's over, the check favors me. Yeah, and I, you know, how about this theory? Tom Brady, 40-year-old athlete, getting the headlines this week. Floyd's 40 years old. He just wants to throw it out there that I'm... Listen, man, I'm not... There's another 40-year-old athlete. Is there athlete. a check in that? Is there any money to be made <laughs> in usurping Brady's moment? If there's not, Floyd doesn't care. I, I, again, I respect Floyd's transparency. And, and it's like everybody else looks for extra motivation, other things about Floyd. He's made it clear. All he cares about is money. And, and again, he's not a deep person. He's, you know, he's, I, I, maybe the reason I can understand is because, you know, there's a little bit, tiny bit of Floyd in me. I like Vegas. I like to gamble. I like, and, and I get the, the again, the I, when, I, when, I, when I think about it more, I'm nothing like, because mo money just doesn't move me nearly the way it does Floyd Mayweather. He'll throw right all integrity, all anything for the check. That's not me.